Amidst the uptick in naval construction that kicked off in the 1890s, the Russian Imperial Navy could see that tensions over the Pacific holdings of the Russian Empire would rise, and war may well be the result. This led to the creation of the Far East Fleet, later the First Pacific Fleet. But in order to stock this new formation, the Navy needed new ships, everything from torpedo boats all the way up to battleships. One particular type of ship whose need was keenly felt was the protected cruiser, a vessel ideal for fleet scouting, destroying enemy torpedo boats, commerce raiding, commerce protection, and second-line support in pitched battles. But Russian shipyards were already full building the full range of newly ordered vessels, and so whilst some ships would be built to the design specification of just over 23 knots top speed and a 6-inch main battery in Russia, contracts were placed to this effect with overseas yards as well. Interestingly, no specific design was called for, just that set of target goals and a target displacement of 6,000 tonnes. This would result in three ships, whose only commonality was a main battery of 12 6-inch guns and a speed of 23 knots, their displacement, engine power, subsidiary weapons, armour thickness, and even whether the main guns were all singles or included some turrets, varied wildly, with each ship also having a different number of funnels. The Bogatyr emerged with three large funnels, Ashkolt with five thin ones, and the star of this video, Variag, splitting the difference at four medium-sized funnels. She would be built in an American shipyard in Philadelphia, displacing 6,500 tonnes at normal load, and reaching almost 25 knots, with 21,000 indicated horsepower delivered by a pair of screws, at least while she was on trials. The main battery consisted of a dozen single six-inch guns. A pair mounted forward, another pair aft, and the remaining eight amidships, with four per side, giving a total broadside of six guns, perpendicular, unless you really liked firing over the heads of your friends and were engaging at long range, and a seven-gun broadside possible at certain angles. Anti-torpedo boat defence came courtesy of a dozen more guns, this time three-inch weapons, along with eight single 47mm and two single 37mm cannons and a pair of machine guns. Six small torpedo tubes were also fitted, one fore, one aft, and two on each side, just above the waterline, with the bow tube especially noticeable due to the bulge just above the anti-fouling paint line. As a protected cruiser, her armour consisted of a turtle back deck of up to three inches thickness, with no belt armour present. She was laid down in autumn 1898, launched a year later in 1899, and commissioned into the fleet at the beginning of January 1901, initially sailing east to Kronstadt, and then she was be sent on to the Russian Mediterranean Squadron, and then onward still to the Pacific, arriving in February 1902. Repainted grey, she was still in the area two years later when the Russo-Japanese War broke out. This found her moored in a Korean port alongside another Russian ship, a small gunboat, an American gunboat, and cruisers from Italy, France, and the UK. Outside the port were six Japanese cruisers, one armoured and five protected, plus a number of Japanese torpedo boats. The Russians seemed to have missed notification of the war, at least in this harbour, and it was only when shots were exchanged with a gunboat and a formal challenge issued that Captain Rutnev was forced to make a decision. Although the captains of the neutral cruisers refused to reposition themselves to make a Japanese attack on the neutral port and the Russian ships easier, as the Japanese had requested, the Variag and its small escort ship sailed out in any way and engaged the Japanese forces in an hour-long battle that ended with the gunboat badly mauled and Variag somewhat damaged and forced to turn back. Although all parties witness to the battle were quite impressed that the cruiser had managed to survive and keep fighting that long against such overwhelming odds. Later in the evening, Variag was scuttled and the crew taken off to the neutral cruisers and nearby Russian transport ships. But that wasn't the end. At the end of the war, the Japanese salvaged and repaired the ship, renaming her the Soya and using her mainly for training cruises. After almost a decade of such service, Japan and Russia would find themselves on the same side in World War I, and Soya was returned to Russia, given back her old name, and began the long voyage back to Western Russian ports. In 1917, she was sent to the UK for a refit, and she was still there when the Russian Revolution broke out. Her crew hoisted the communist flag, and British troops duly seized the ship and she briefly entered Royal Navy service, but then ran aground and was turned into a storage hulk for a couple of years before being sold for scrap in 1920, 
but she went aground again on her way to the breakers and had to be broken up in place off the Scottish coast in the early 1920s. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.